Now, I have been a member of uh, Dialogue of Civilizations, uh, the uh, World Public Forum, you know, for at least 12 years, you know, before the Institute was established. So I'm sort of a, uh, uh, a regular member of that uh, Dialogue of Civilizations idea, you know. And you can see, I'm very happy that we are now established here in Berlin. And I'm particularly happy about this evening uh, because uh, we have now uh, decided to pay attention to a very crucial issue, uh, crucial for most people who are living in this area. Uh, and this is the issue of the future of Europe. We have not sufficiently addressed in the past the issue of what is the meaning of Europe, what can Europe contribute to uh, international security, international peace, international welfare. We have not sufficiently addressed that issue. Uh, we have asked, you know, what uh, uh, can Europe do uh, in Asia? What is uh, Europe's role in the Middle East? What is Europe's role in, a a in Latin America? But the question is, what is Europe <laughs> itself? And what can Europe contribute uh, to the security of the world, the well-being of the world? So I'm very happy that we have addressed this issue today and in a very, very uh, enlightening and uh, instructive manner, uh, a, a very uh, uh, intelligent presentation and a very passionate presentation. Uh, I'm very happy that somebody made an effort uh, to present the idea of Europe, or European Union, in a positive light, not just as a burden, not just a problem, not just as a crisis. There's enormous literature on the crisis of Europe, you know. And we always hear this, that Europe is in a deep crisis and probably it cannot be solved. Now, we have here a, uh, a presentation which with some degree of passion pleaded for the future of Europe. And I'm very happy about this because I believe that Europe has a role to play uh, in uh, the contemporary global situation. Uh, Europe does not just exist for itself. Now, Europe has also a, a role at home uh, to present a, uh, a possibility of a just, peaceful life within the framework of Europe. So this is, I mean, the European idea applied to the European situation itself. But beyond this, beyond these limits, Europe has much bigger obligations and much bigger task in the world, namely to play a role of peacemaker, of negotiator, of dialoguer somebody who contributes to the resolution of the conflicts which are brewing in this world, geopolitical conflicts, geoeconomic conflicts, but also religious conflicts, cultural conflicts. So Europe can and should make a contribution to all these uh, issues and problems which exist in the world because Europe has a long tradition of peacemaking. Europe has a long tradition of conflicts, but Europe also has learned from these conflicts that it should not be repeated. You know. uh, we had these enormous religious wars, you know. So how religion can be ex exploited for political agendas, how religion can be uh, brutalized you know, for totally unreligious or anti-religious purposes. So we have experience here. We have learned from this. And we have overcome these religious conflicts, religious wars. We had a 30 years war. <laughs> it's a major war where Europe was decimated, you know. By 1648, Europe was decimated. So we have learned from this. We had two world wars in Europe, two world wars which started in Europe although it spread over the rest of the world. But it started in Europe. So the hope is, or the assumption is, that Europeans have learned something 
And by learning from these experiences, Europe can make a contribution to the solution of other conflicts. We have made a decision, I think, after the Second World War, many people of the generation to which I belong have made a commitment, never again. This was a commitment of my generation after the war, after the Second World War, never again. So with this commitment, we can go to the rest of the world and tell them, look, this has to be resolved in a different way. And we have to uh, avoid, if at all possible, military conflict, and especially nuclear conflict. Uh, this, I think the speaker today uh, referred very, very properly uh, to the, uh, the situation with regard to nuclear war. Uh, there is this doomsday clock, doomsday clock, which uh, scientists, nuclear scientists, have established. And this doomsday clock was recently moved forward to two minutes before midnight. You know. These are not politicians, not ideologues who established that, but learned scientists, scientists in atomic research. And they considered the situation so grim and so uh, dangerous that they felt they have to alert people, to wake up people, that it may be almost too late, almost too late. Uh, so I was very happy to hear that again. Uh, uh, I have always felt that uh, uh, we are moving slowly <laughs> but steadily in the direction of a major war possibly a world war, possibly a nuclear war. I have always feared that this was our agenda. You know. uh, and so if I come back to Europe, this is Europe's message. That is Europe's uh, task and obligation to contribute to a reduction of conflict, to a possible solution of conflict. In any case, to more dialogue between conflicting parties. This is why we are called the, con the dialogue of civilizations. We need to emphasize more this aspect of dialogue and uh, show its positive contributions. Because in Europe, we have learned through dialogue that some disputes can actually be overcome. Just look at the situation right here in, uh, in, 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 in Europe between some of the countries which were at war for centuries. You know. uh, for instance, Germany and France. They have been you know, enemies for so long. And they fought one war after the other. 1871, 1914, 1939, these were always Franco-German wars, mainly. You know. And we have been able to overcome that uh, by negotiating, by learning from one another, uh, by establishing peaceful relations. Uh, so we have learned you know, what dialogue means and what it can contribute. So for this reason, I believe Europe has a task, an obligation to contribute to solution of conflicts in the world uh, precisely through dialogue among civilizations. So <laughs> this is why I'm so happy that we have a, uh, a presentation about Europe and what Europe can do. Uh, but we have to, first of all, to remember our history, to remember what we have done historically, how we have led to conflict, how we have uh, created conflicts, how we have uh, fought many, many wars and very, very devastating and destructive wars until we finally <laughs> learned the lesson of these wars. And our task now is to communicate this lesson to the rest of the world. So Europe definitely has a, a, a task in the world. But for this, Europe first has to learn its own history. That's why I'm very much uh, in favor of the argument of our speaker today that the European Union first has to get its act together. We have to get our act together so that we are able to make this contribution to the rest of the world. 
you know. We are located in Europe, so let's make the best of it and teach the rest of the world what we have learned. We have, we have learned it the hard way, but I think there's a possibility for us to make another contribution. Uh, and uh, whatever I have done in this context of the World Public Forum and now of the Dialogue of Civilization Research Institute has all been in that direction. You know, That has always been my agenda, my purpose in life. Thank you.